Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. I am Victoria Nyelifira, a teacher by profession, and I'll be your online geography teacher. Now, in today's lesson, I'm going to introduce to you the topic river processes. As I said, I'm going to introduce the river processes in today's topics. It is very important to know that everything that I'm going to be discussing here, it's according to the near geography syllabi. And I'm going to be going through or making separate videos on individual specific objectives which we can find in our syllabi. Now that all that is out of the way, let's get into this lesson, which is river processes. Um, <laughs> a lot of my students ask me, but miss, why is it important for us to learn river processes? Well, the answer to that is very simple. This is because rivers play a major role in shaping the natural landscapes. First, it's very interesting to know how these landscapes were created. And if you love geography, you must somehow, you know, be keen to understand or to know how, or for example, how do, how do uh, waterfalls form? Eh? How was this coach form? What led to the development of the Kenyan, for example? Well, for this topic in particular, we are going to be discussing all the landforms and all the landscapes which are created as a result of river processes. Now, what is river processes? Um, I'll start defining this by breaking down the topic itself, where I'm going to, um, to explain the term rivers. And then I'll also explain the term process, basically what the two means and how the two integrate together to form a topic. Now, the term river simply means water flowing from a highland to a lowland over a long distance. Now, the road through which a river travels is what we call the course of the river. Now, this course is further divided into three courses, namely, the upper course, well, this is where the river begins. Then we have the middle course. And lastly, we have the lower course where the river enters into an ocean. Now, at the beginning of the river, we find the river source where the river starts. And then in the lower course, this is where we find the mouth of the river. Basically, this is just an area where the river end us into an ocean. But it's also very important to know that not all rivers end us into an ocean. An example of that is the Kavango River uh, that is between Namibia and Botswana. That one ends inland and it does not end into an ocean. That's why we find that amazing Kavango Delta in the northern eastern part of the country as well as in Botswana. Now, moving on to the term process. Now, the term process means a series of action or steps taken in order to achieve a particular end. Now, if you are to relate this to river processes, for example, when it comes to erosion, right? Erosion has to take place in order for, for a waterfall to, to form, for example. Now, when erosion takes place, these eroded materials need to be transported before deposition takes place. And as a result, deltas are formed by now deposition when the materials are, are, are transported. Uh, similarly, when erosion and deposition takes place simultaneously, or in other words, when deposition and erosion is taking place at the same time, we get to find that meanders are found within the river. Now you see that bending that you find in the river, that is what we refer to as a meander. Like I said, river processes, right? Anything that has a particular end. So in this case, transportation, erosion, and deposition has to take place in order for certain landforms and landscapes to be formed. Um, now, river processes. 
Now, these are processes that work together to shape planet Earth. And as a result, new landforms as well as new landscapes are created. Now, what are these processes? We have three main processes. The first one is erosion. Then we have transportation. And lastly, we have deposition. So these are the main processes behind river processes. Ne? So erosion basically means the breaking down and wearing of riverbed and banks and the rocks which are being carried within the river. Transportation, when now the river has the energy, it carries this trans or it carries or transport the eroded material. So essentially what should happen first is that erosion has to take place. Then those bigger rocks are then broken down into smaller pieces. And through the energy that is in the river, uh, then these bits of rocks and pebbles are transported. And lastly, we have deposition, which occurs when the river no longer has the energy to transport the load. So what should happen is that uh, in the beginning, I explained to you that we have three main causes of the river. The upper course, the middle course, as well as your lower course. Now, what usually happens is that erosion takes place. And then when erosion takes place, this material that has been eroded or broken down are then transported. And lastly, this uh, transported material has to be deposited somewhere when the river no longer has the energy to carry the load. Uh, the energy that we are referring here just means that the power of the water is not there anymore to carry these heavy pebbles and materials that are being carried within the river anymore. And when that happens, especially when the river reaches a lower gradient, then the river will start to drop bits of rocks and materials. And that is what we refer to as deposition. And it takes place usually when the river no longer has the energy to transport the load. Now, what is the driving force behind river processes? Again, the answer to this question is very simple. It's basically just the water that is flowing through the river. Because if it was not for the water, no erosion, neither transportation or deposition will occur. And even if these things, you know, these things already okay in nature, then it will not be referred to as river processes, but maybe as coastal processes or maybe wind processes. But those are the, some of the topics that we will again discuss in the future lessons for today, I want us to be focused on river processes. So the main driving force behind river processes is just basically the water that is flowing through the river. Now, if you go to your syllabi, the first specific objective there says we need to identify and describe the main features of a drainage basin with reference to the channel, to the river channel, I mean, watershed area, as well as the catchment area. Now, very important, remember, we need to identify. Not only identify, but you should also be able to describe how does that thing looks like. By identification, you just need to identify that, aha, uh -huh, this is the one. Now, I'm going to go, I'm going to show you a picture here which is displaying and identifying all these main features of a drainage basin. Now let's take a look at the drainage basin. Well, um, the diagram that you can see on the screen here, this is a simplified version of what a drainage basin looks like. Now, what is a drainage basin actually? This is an area of land where precipitation collects and drains into an ocean. In other words, it's an area of land drained, and by, drained by a river and its tributaries. Now, notice that I said precipitation and not rainfall. This is because some places receive snow 
and that snow eventually melts and when it melts it essentially becomes water right that's why we are saying precipitation and um the tributaries that you can see on the screen i've tried to label them are then the small channels that feeds the water into the main river channel okay now we have three main basic features for a drainage basin which we are required to know according to our syllabi the first one is a watershed secondly we have the river channel and then we have the catchment area now what is a watershed uh, a watershed this is an area of land that drains all the streams that drains all the streams and rainfall into the main river channel so i want you to imagine yourself standing between two mountains and where you are standing is then where you have the river flowing through so i want you to imagine the peaks of those mountains the edges of it of, of the two mountains now then that is the water shed because if you are standing between these two mountains, all the water that is collecting inside between these two mountains that you are standing from, then the boundary to that is what we then refer to as a watershed. Secondly, we have the river channel, which is basically an area where the water collects when it rains. Take note here we are referring to the rain to, 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 to water that is um, that has been received from rain, right? So that is what we refer to as the river channel. So basically, you have your watershed. Now, this watershed directs water into the tributaries, which are small channels which are feeding the main rivers. And then this uh, tributaries connect to the main river channel, which we basically call our river or the course of the river whatever way you want to catch it now lastly we have the catchment area now the catchment area is the layer is an area for example if you have to take a look at this diagram you see where you find all these tiny bushes and all these tributaries all that land that is in between the watershed ne? and the and the river channel that is what we refer to as a catchment area well this is just another diagram you can see the dotted lines or the dashed lines that is then the watershed then we have the river channel and the catchment area or in other words we just refer to it as a drainage another picture just a simplified one i'm trying to give as many pictures as possible so that you are able to clearly identify it remember as i said right imagine yourself standing in between two mountains so when you're standing in between these two mountains or however mountains they are so i want you to imagine the peak of those mountains is then what forms this watershed area but in this picture is then uh, indicated as a drainage divide but another term to that is what you refer to as a watershed then you have your tributaries which are feeding with are these small channels feeding water into the main channel and then you have your main channel which is now what we call a river and now this whole diagram is then what we refer to as a drainage basin um, well this one is just definition of terms okay um, you have the definition of the drainage basin I'm not going to say it again because I said it in the beginning your watershed as well as your catchment area now this is where we end with today's lesson the next time that we are going to meet or the next video that i'm going to record i'm going to explain into details different causes of the river and all their characteristics and what actually takes place 
we see the three main uh, river courses or the courses of the river. As for me today, your geography teacher online, I say bye bye and I'll see you into the next video. Please like, subscribe, and share with your loved ones. Bye-bye.